Oh, look! Hi, visitor! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Why can they shoot in the water, but I can't shoot in the water? I'm gonna die right here. I, I was gonna try and show something, but I'm gonna die. Oh, yeah, look. Did you see that? He's in... Look, this guy's not. Okay, let's, let's let this guy come up. Would you... Hey, come here. Come here. Shotguns are so OP. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. I'm trying to show something here. Oh, shit. Yeah, who's shooting at me? Yeah, look, that guy that just popped out. Look, he's in the freaking sand. Look, watch, watch. He's in, he's in the sand. How, why? Oh, at least he died off of my, oh, look, they actually broke one of them. Yeah, did you see that? He was in the sand. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Zomboland Gaming. I'm in fact Zombo Skater, your captain, back for another episode of Sunken Land. We are diving back into the Waterworld-esque style of this survival game. And we're going to start this episode a little bit different. So I've been playing in a multiplayer world with a couple of my friends, the same two that have been playing Satisfactory with me. And, uh, well, we don't want to complain about anything because obviously it's a very early current version of the game. And you can clearly see by the screen that's right here, there's, there's a lot of features that he's still working on and that they're still going to be developing and whatnot. But we figured we'd go ahead and throw our hat in the bag and uh, and kind of discuss some of the things that we would like to see in the game, both changes, additions, what we think is great about the game. So I'm going to go ahead and get on in it. Uh, we can kind of see here just kind of what's already being prepared. Uh, and so some of the things I mentioned might be stuff that they're already working on. I don't know, but let's go ahead and get on into it. All right, for this portion of the game, we're going to be playing as my character that I've been playing in the multiplayer world, which is Zombina, and I'm just going to go straight on in, and a cat is in my way. We're just going to go ahead and keep it single player, uh, although, you know what, just in case they decide they want to join, uh, I am going to go ahead and make sure that I set that all up for them, not visible public, blah, blah, blah. Right now, for the multiplayer world, we currently friendly fire off. We're not sharing research, so we can all kind of figure shit out on our own. And everything's kind of just normal and mid. We're just sharing the map and the flag. That's about it. Uh, so there we go. So that's that's what's going to be happening as we're going into my multiplayer world. So obviously things are going to look quite a bit different. Well, all right. So as you can see, we've been pretty daggum busy in this. Just to give you an idea, um, yeah, we've uh, we've located every single island. We have defeated every single faction so to say that we have uncovered quite a bit of the game is pretty much an understatement even the blueprints there's only a few of the blueprints that i have left so we've had quite a bit of time to uh look over the world and see kind of what's going on i mean even playing around with the different boats uh so we're gonna go ahead and just kind of go based off of uh uh, I asked in my Discord things people would like to see changed, and uh, Tweedle right off the bat said more food options. So we're gonna go ahead and go all the way up to my uh, rooftop here. So Big Red Jeep has been building here, uh, Tweedle has been building right here, and then I am taking over this entire top of the rock, just exactly kind of like how we're doing in our single player world. And uh, we will showcase showcase this in a second, but I'd like to get through as quickly as possible all of these changes and additions. So currently we have lemons, the cloth, which isn't a food obviously, but lemons, strawberries, cabbage, potatoes, all sorts of fishes and crabs, bird meat, right, uh, in the game. And then you can grill stuff. And then you have these recipes. So one of the things Tweedle has said was, I definitely would like to see more options for food. Uh, maybe just, uh, I mean, there is canned food, candy bars, some things like that that you can find in game. But it would be nice to see a few more recipes as these recipes don't use all the ingredients currently available in game. Uh, there are mushrooms as well. Obviously, if we go into our medicines, you can see that the algae, uh, the mushrooms and strawberries are used for things. So everything is used most, 
mostly in the game for all of the various recipes. There's a few fishes that aren't, um, but you tend to get quite a bit of one resource over another, like the large fish meat, you get a crap ton of that. Um, lemons, I'm getting a lot of those. The strawberries, I'm getting quite a bit of. Uh, so it would be kind of nice to see some more food options be developed, and, I'm, and I have a feeling they will be. On that note, one of the things that I definitely suggested, crafting more than one at a time. I mean, I can maybe understand the stove one at a time because you've only got one pot, but it would still be nice to have multiple items. The grill, both the uh, original grill, uh, what are these called, if we go into B, uh, food, you've got the simple grill, the stove, and the improved grill. Both of these only do one item. I feel like the improved grill should at least be able to do three or four or five at a time. Uh, preferably, can I just put a stack of wood and a stack of items in it and just let it go? Uh, that'd be my suggestion, would be to be able to cook more at a time. Uh, it's not so bad when you're playing single player. I mean, one piece of food gets you through most of the day, depending on how strenuous you're doing things. Uh, but on a multiplayer server, if you've only got the one grill and the one stove, I mean, one person is gonna be spending the entire day doing nothing but cooking for everybody on the server. So that'd be the suggestion for me is uh, more items cookable at a time and from Tweedle, more food options. Um, also from Tweedle, uh, if you look at the um, the things here, it says uh, and it increases stamina recovery, increases maximum health, uh, enhances, I believe, um, stamina recovery while swimming or whatever. I can't remember what exactly that one is. Uh, that's, that's another thing that I need to write down. Uh, can I please see all the verbiage in these? Uh, there's there's no way for me to see what the heck the rest of the words on this are. Um, but so he was suggesting, can I have a timer or something that shows how long my buffs are gonna last? Uh, currently, it kind of just says, uh, when you eat the food, it says, hey, you've got increased stamina or you, or you can see your health bar go up, but it doesn't give you a time on how long the buff lasts. So that would be an option for him. Uh, and then for, Big Red Jeep, he was suggesting the resource respawn. This is more of a server related thing. For single player, not too bad. If you go around and collect all the loot and whatnot, you've got more than enough than, than you're gonna need as a single player. But for server side, which I'm assuming they're gonna be adding, I mean, right now, I think if I hit enter, no, not enter, where's the uh, server console right here? There clearly is nothing I can do here. Uh, so obviously that's something that's in the works still. Uh, can I please get out of the uh, chat menu? Uh, hopefully one of the console commands will be resource respawn timers. Um, so that way right now everyone is kind of doing a little bit of a cheaty cheaty where you just don't take all the items out of uh, a resource or you don't harvest a node fully. And then when you log out and log back in, that stuff is populated back in. Uh, certain items like the trees, some of the scrap, you know, I've noticed some stuff has been respawning in, but at a very, very, very slow rate. Uh, so it'd be nice to be able to see server side for me to be able to select respawn radius and time. So that way you could get resources back quicker uh, for everybody on the server. Uh, in the boats, a compass while in the boats or just like a, we have binoculars, right? Uh, we can use our binoculars as an item, but it'd be nice to have a compass as well. Either have it just, uh, you know, on the HUD when you're in a boat, not necessarily on an item, or give us an in-game compass that you have to actually put in your hand and use. That would be pretty cool. I'd like that. Um, inventories. So when you're looking at an inventory, I can click an item right, and a whole stack will go in but I'd like to be able to, you know, have a, a control click or a shift click, something that I can do all of one kind of item at a time instead of having to do every single uh, stack one at a time. Uh, shift click would be good. The splitting feature, mm, you have to kind of click and drag down to split and then select over here. Not quite sure I like that. Maybe if you had a, uh, you know, hold it with your left mouse button and then scroll wheel, uh, to select the items, you know, amount that you want, that'd be kind of decent. So that's another big red one. Uh, silhouette. So when it's nighttime and you're trying to shoot, right? Uh, one, 
on a rifle, I'd love to be able to, uh, you know, currently you can have a red dot gun sight that lets you target enemies farther away. I would actually like to have sights on my gun because I'm holding a rifle, right? If I hold the rifle and then I swap my shotgun, I shot, swap my pistol, I'm looking the exact same distance. And with the rifle, that's not an iron sight. That's a red dot sight. I'd like maybe a scope, right? To be able to use my rifle as a rifle, especially uh, when you're farther away, like pulling up into land. But as far as at nighttime, a uh, big red suggestion was maybe we can change the color of the enemies. So that way they're not completely just disappeared into the background. They blend in so well with the background that they get a chance to shoot you before you even remotely come close to shooting them. It's it's pretty insane. I mean, like I said, we have now conquered every single one of these islands. And there's some occasions where like, you just can't see them at all whatsoever. They blend in so well with the background from a distance that you have to get up close and personal most of the time. Uh, when it's daytime, even then it gets a little bit difficult to see some of the enemies. So maybe some sort of silhouetting or just a change of the clothes for the enemies so that way they don't blend in with the background 100% like they currently do. Uh, that would be nice. I, I don't think a silhouetting like you can do with like Diablo. Uh, I think, you know, that'd be a little bit cheesy, but maybe just something where they don't blend in so damn well would be nice. Um, oh, and also with enemies, including sharks, directional, uh, you know, directional indicators of where your attacks are coming from. Uh, maybe like on a hardcore mode that's completely gone or at least give a setting where you can have a setting that says hey uh, I'd like to be able to see where the bullets are coming from maybe by like a sound meter or just a, you know being able to see the shots better You'd be like oh shit that was from the left oh shit that was from the right right now you can't tell it, it just comes from everywhere like with the sharks right they, they they can attack you before you even know they're there and when you turn around they're like just gone right uh because uh, they swim so fast so some sort of directional assist in the where the attack is coming from would be nice and then decorations or items so uh i'm i'm cool with all the decorations and items and whatnot but i guess uh the the general public and, and as well as uh dana pointed this out to me um well i mean actually i don't think i have any in here do i unless it's upstairs do i have an example of this no no i guess i i guess i do not Oh, no, it's on my front door. Uh, where am I at? Go to my front door. Uh, so, neon. The neon is very male-centric for the most part. I mean, I think it's okay. I mean, all, almost all of the stuff, I mean, like, the best day ever, that's pretty feminine in my opinion. Uh, the cat upstairs, pretty feminine. The peace signs are pretty, you know, gender non-specific. Um, but I guess apparently there's a lot of people online that are saying maybe we should have a little bit more, like, representation of the brothers for the feminine side of people so like instead of having just like a neon uh devil girl maybe have a neon devil dude you know what i mean uh that's uh you know i, I mean i'm a, i'm okay with all the neon that's curly in game but sure it could use a little bit more less uh gender specific uh for the for the neon uh, you know, in my opinion, that'd be that'd be okay. Uh, if not, I don't think it's game breaking. But uh, yeah, we could we could use some some male uh, neon figures as well. I think. And then POV options. So currently, you can only be first person. Uh, a lot of survival games nowadays have both third uh, third and first person modes. So maybe an option to be in, in third person would would help out with some of the fighting sequences. Or like driving the boat. It'd be really cool to be third person driving the boat or the helicopter around. I think that would be really nice. Uh, so those were all the big red suggestions. Uh, Tweedle suggested a couple others too, uh, along with the food suggestions. Currently, like if we head down uh, right over here, I believe that's either, no, 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 they're both at the dock now. Uh, currently, there's only like three things that you can get in the crab nets. It'd be nice to have maybe actually crabs come in the crab nets. Where is our... Oh, God. The enemies blew up one of my crab nets. Oh, oh God. Eh, eh. Can I please access this? No, not change color. Access. Uh, take fish. There we go. So you can see right there. Those are pretty much primarily two of the main fish. And then there's one that's kind of curly cued that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. You really only get three fish options. Same with when you're fishing. Maybe with the fishing, it'd be nice to have 
a uh, chance to catch the Marlins, maybe catch a shark. Uh, just maybe you would need something other than the worms. Maybe we would need, say, like a, you know, a big sinker or some other kind of bait that we can craft inside game. Uh, like, you know, maybe using the fish. Uh, oh, there you go. You got a bream as well. So there's like four, four kinds of fish to catch. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a curly Q one and bream. So there's four kinds of fish. Uh, maybe, yeah. So maybe some like extra additional uh, uh, bait to catch the bigger fish. That'd be kind of cool, I think. And then what does he got? Oh, yeah. This is a big one for me as well. So currently when you're building... If you want to go from a wood structure to a metal structure, you actually have to have your repair hammer, and then you're going to, uh, you know, come up and you're going to demolish this, or you can, uh, I believe, if I just, uh, what, what's the, um, what was the way I could do this? Yeah, if you demolish it, just I think it just um, puts it in your inventory, right? No, it gives you your items back. Yeah, it does give you your items back. How did I, how did I do this before to just remove? I, there's a way to remove an item. Oh, 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 I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Where's it at? Uh, it is right here. So if we swap, maybe swap that over right there. So if we take our packager route, right, you can come over here, like say, um, oh, I can't package foundations. Duh. I'm an, I'm an, yeah, you can't, you can't currently package walls, foundations, things like that. So you can't get that back. In order to replace, to say, go from wood to, to scrap metal, you have to get rid of that wall and then replace it, which now I need to replace my wall because I don't have enough items on me. But you have to then replace it with scrap metal. It'd be nice to be able to have an option, maybe using the repair hammer, uh, just kind of like with um, uh, rust, where when you walk up to it, instead of just having a demolish option, it gives me an upgrade option on the... Uh, you know, the wheel as well. So that way I can just upgrade if I have the materials in my inventory, upgrade from wood to, to scrap metal. And I will repair that wall later. Good grief. So yeah, so that's all the Tweedles now. So now on to the ones I'm thinking of. So uh, if we come down, uh, we need some more scrap metal. Let's go ahead and come on in here and grab some scrap metal from wherever the heck I have, just some spare scrap metal. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, that should be enough. Uh, so let's go ahead and repair this wall real fast. Uh, buildable walls, uh, scrap metal wall. Boop. So if we come down to the front of my base here, this will be an easy way to, uh, to do this. So if I wanted to build, like in the case of how I have my, my, my uh, ladders here, this foundation, which is oddly placed, was pretty much the only good place I could put it. Because if I tried to build another metal foundation right and say I want to build it lower, there's currently no way to lower the height of a buildable. Yes, they'll snap to anything, but look at this. If I want to put a foundation down here at the height of, see where the bottom of the ladder is? I'd like the foundation to be right there at the bottom of the ladder. Currently, there's no way for me to do that whatsoever, which is highly annoying. Uh, so it'd be nice to have either a chance to uh, select either a free form or a snap to grid option when you're building. And then as far as rotating, when I'm going to put my initial item down right, I can place it wherever I want to. But when it comes to the next item, I'd like to be able to rotate just how, if I was to place this one down, see how I can rotate 360 degrees. I'd like to be able to rotate more than 90 degrees when placing this down as well. Uh, let's go ahead and break this out. So that'd be my suggestion. Uh, also, you don't need to bring up the message every single time I want to demolish uh, because it makes you go through the demolish animation. Like if I were to come here, well, of course it didn't do that for the damn ladder, did it? Of course, now I have to place the ladder back. But see right there, are you sure you're to demolish metal foundation? Like I don't need to see that every single time because I have to go through the entire demolish animation in order to get to that. So there's no, no reason to have that be a thing uh now i need a ladder back can i have my metal ladder back please uh metal ladder actually you know what before we do that let's go ahead and go on with stairs so stairs right stairs are the one that definitely need to be snappable like my ladder will snap to my foundation why won't stairs snap it's ridiculous i can't snap uh stairs to anything whatsoever so when you're going to try and place this i mean look at this 
I, I can't, it, it's impossible. It is next to impossible to place your stairs exactly how you want them to be. So it's cool that I can freeform it right now, but I'd like to be able to damn snap the stairs so I can actually, you know, get my stairs aligned properly. That would be very nice. See, like the ladder just automatically snaps. So yeah, those are my suggestions for building. We really need some improved building, which I'm sure he's working on. Um, we haven't seen him yet, so we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, enemies, enemies glitch into the sand. Like, especially like whenever we hear uh, enemies attacking us, they'll come up to the sand here and they will be glitched down inside the sand. If we see a raid here later on, I'll be able to show an example of that. But what's bothersome about it, both in the water and when they're glitched in the sand, they can shoot at you and targeting them is freaking ridiculous. It's hard as hell. You kind of just shoot randomly in their direction and hope you hit them. It, it's kind of a mess. So the, the glitchiness of the enemies coming out of the water greatly needs to be changed because you'll be standing like right here, looking at an enemy over there, all of a sudden they glitch in the sand and then they're behind you. Like it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So that needs to be fixed. Uh, planters. So planters, right, with the Everything else is collectible. You walk up to it, you just say E to collect. But with these, uh, I need my ax. With these, you have to chop with your ax, which isn't too big of a problem, except for occasionally you hit your planter and you start to damage your planter. I really feel bushes shouldn't need the ax. You should be able to just go up to it and E collect just like you do everything else. So that way you don't, just like that. See, I hit my planters there instead of hitting the bush i just hit my planter again instead of hitting the bush so it'd be nice to it'd be nice to actually just collect from the planter i don't i don't see why there was a change there to chop this tree down instead of the bush because even if you're looking way up like this you still sometimes manage to uh, hit the uh the planter instead or you just absolutely whiff it and don't hit anything so that would be a nice change we are in need of some food good grief where you know what i'm just gonna eat a raw fish why not do i have any water on me I don't know how to do water on me. Good grief. So yeah, so that's that's planters. Planters should definitely be just collect all all the time. Uh, let me see, what do we got here? Uh, trader, we're gonna head over to the trader here in a little bit. But talking about server console commands like we were discussing earlier, uh, let me get some water here real fast. Uh, server commands, I really think day night cycle should be added. So that way, you know, if you're on a server where everybody's just like, I don't want it to be night or I want it to always be night, That'd be nice to have an option, just like with Ark and Conan and all those games, to be able to select how long the day versus night is, uh, if you have them at all, that sort of deal. Uh, hunger and thirst. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to adjust hunger and thirst as well. So that way, you know, if you want your server to not have to really worry about the hunger and thirst, obviously there's the normal, easy, and hard modes that you can select and that will affect your hunger and thirst uh but if you want to be a little bit more specific about it uh you know that would be nice to have a server option for that as well uh resource respawn radius we already talked about that uh to maybe set a radius away from your base so it does force people to leave the base to go get stuff or like if i cut that tree down i don't want that damn tree growing back up again and if, you know, there's a lot of games where if, the, if you don't set a respawn radius, the shit will just grow right up into your into your uh, buildings. Don't want that, right? So it'd be nice to set those. Uh, value of the lootables. So right now, there are loot tables, right? That's behind the scenes, random number generator stuff that's going on to fill the chests. Each different kind of chest has a different kind of lootable. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to set the value of those tables. So that way, if you want like a high XP server, if, if that's what you want to call it, so like the lootables are always like super good lootables where you get like the most you possibly can out of a chest or if you want to make it more difficult and have like less valuables you have to go like really far away to get the valuables or specific POIs to get valuables uh, it'd be nice to be able to set that on a server side uh, enemy strength and defense it'd be nice to be able to set both yours and the enemies like I can take more damage the enemies can't uh, or the enemies hit harder, uh, so that way I have to try harder to, to defeat them. Uh, that sort of thing. It'd be good to set that. Uh, and then, like I just said, the player strength. And then, uh, what did I have here? Uh, oh yeah, I already said loot tables and values. Uh, all right, so that's all that, I think. Uh, next big stickler. This is a problem for Rust as well. Look at this. The rugs on, on the foundations 
perfect beautiful you can see the entire rug no problem but when we come up to the floor piece <laughs> the rugs the rugs are um hideous hideous and i and i know this is an issue just with most of these kind of games it's just a way that the textures render when they're on top of each other um but if there's a way to fix that oh please it, it drives me bananas makes me almost not want to put stuff around here uh plus speaking of like these kind of items like rust has like a comfort value right the more like bear rugs and stuff like that that you put around a base the more comfort you get so the better you heal and all that sort of stuff uh, I wonder if that's going to be an addition to the game where the more you decorated your base, the higher your comfort level, the quicker your stamina and health and all that sort of stuff regen when at base. That'd be kind of cool to see. Uh, um, oh, row boats. Row boats, right? You can you can row them. Or in the case of pedal boats, we can pedal them. And, you know, we might as well go to... Uh, uh, do I have any monetary stuff on me? Um, I do not. Let's grab some monetary stuff. This video is going to be very long. I just now realized that. We're not even going to probably get into actually um, <laughs> actually doing our single player world in this episode. Uh, I, I feel like I feel like this is kind of one of those things. It's early access. It's good to talk about this stuff. So maybe the developer uh, will work on certain things or tell us to shove off the game is what it is, uh, which is absolutely fine. That's that's their their pr preference. So uh, boats, right? We can come over here and we can paddle the boat. No problem. We can come over here and we can raise the sail no problem but it'd be nice to have an option on the sailboat to if we don't want to use the sail to do if like say we're just right here and we just want to quickly get around like to my other door to row it'd be nice to have an option to row and with this if you don't have fuel in this boat you ain't going nowhere although i did find a cheeky little thing here look if i push the boat i could just kind of walk on the boat and, and push the boat to wherever i want to go which is a little bit cheeky, obviously, but you fall off. It'd be nice to have an option if you're out of fuel, even if like, say you have to craft a paddle, like you have to find material to craft a paddle, like a piece of wood or something, right? Still, give me the option to row. That would be nice. Uh, moving on with boats and just in general storage. Look at this. This boat is more expensive to build than this boat, which is more expensive to build than this boat. They all have the exact same storage kind. And like, while this holds two passengers, this one can hold four passengers. The storage should reflect the fact that you can have more people on this boat. Because if I'm going out with a full party of four, we will only have one storage for the entire boat. Um, you know, so you wouldn't have to create another chest, just make the storage bigger or make it upgradable, like a modular design. If we can have a modular design with storage, that'd be great. Like this storage right here, one, two, three, four, five rows, right? Is smaller than the crate that's on the back of the sailboat and yet it has one more line of storage. That makes no sense. Uh, let me head back up on into base here. I really need a better stair set to get up here. But if we come over here, metal barrel, five. We come over here to the toolbox, five. The food container, five. They all have even the, um, Look at this, the wardrobe, which is quite a bit bigger than the food container, has less storage than the food container. That doesn't seem quite right, which is why I have clothes down there because the clothes are filling up all my spots. Uh, so storage needs to have a varying amount of storage capability. One, to reflect the items that you're putting in them, and two, just so you actually want to build various different styles of storage. I mean, I'm doing it more for looks than anything the fridge could use a little bit more storage i think um so yeah storage needs to be worked on a little bit in my opinion uh base alerts actually you know let's go on go on with clothing since i'm already talking about it clothing currently once you get up into the higher level clothing you're never ever ever gonna wear all the other clothing not unless maybe you're role playing right um but in the, even in the same line of role playing it'd be nice to see clothing have a functionality other than just armor level like for instance if i'm wearing all of this gear it makes me slightly a little bit heavier so i use stamina more while swimming uh whereas if i was to put on say like a scuba diving outfit or a swimsuit i swim faster because i'm lighter uh of course i have less armor right like that that's fine having less armor is absolutely fine uh but i mean like the mini skirt has the same as 
the pants right. Well, pants are gonna protect your legs and stuff a little bit more than a mini skirt would. So the armor reflection there isn't quite the same. Um, or like say, if I do swim with pants on, when I get out, I'll have like a wet effect that I need to dry out in the sun for a little bit. So then my stamina regens a little bit faster. Uh, you know, so I think clothes could use a little bit more of, a, of an upgrade to like actually be more beneficial to, to the game other than just, hey, I've collected every single piece of clothing in the game. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, so crafting. We talked about this with the food. If I come in here, I'm crafting one item at a time. It'd be nice uh, to be able to, or even like if I go into this inventory, it'd be nice to have selection of craft more items than one at a time. That, that, that's something I definitely would like to see. Uh, beds, currently your beds aren't nameable. Uh, so when you die, if you have multiple beds, they all just say simple bed. So you don't know which base your bed is located at. Like uh, currently I have three different beds located throughout the map, right? Just to make it easier when I die to be closer to something. I, I don't know which bed is which. There's no rhyme or reason of which, like you would think maybe the first bed you craft would be at the top of the menu. Nope, not necessarily. So when you die, you have no idea which one you're spawning in at. So that, that would be uh, nice to be addressable. Uh, items to sit on. Uh, you can't lay down in the bed. If I come all the way up here to the top, there's no way to sit on the furniture. Uh, it's cool to have the decorations. I really like the decorations, but the whole purpose of me putting this here was so I could sit down, relax, have a beverage, uh, and, and look out at the world. I can't sit in the chair. So please, please, please make chairs sittable. Okay, all right. Uh, just a couple more items here, I think. Not too many. Uh, and I think a lot of these are like typical of most games. So, uh, you know, I don't think I'm coming up with anything new or exciting here, but see, this is fine. Open doors in the middle, but when I close the doors, um, like, look at this. I can't even see the closed doors thing until I get here. And then look, I got smacked back inside. I think the closed door option should actually be on the door, uh, the face of the door itself. So that way you're not having to like hunt and peck. Like I think it should actually be located on the door piece. So like when I'm walking out, I can just click right here on the door, you know, or just have a broader hitbox area for closing the door. And it's the same with the doors, the, the single doors up in the base, uh, the option for closing doors. Like it looks like it's on the edge there. This one's not so bad. Like the, the single doors, not so bad. It's the gates that are really the issue for me for closing them, especially if you got a whole bunch of enemies coming at you, rushing in and then trying to find where the hell the closed door spot is, is a little bit crazy. Uh, and then flags, flags. So if I was to come down uh, here, right? And look at, uh, wait, where's my flag? My flag is up on the top. I came all the way down for no daggum reason. Boop. So we got our flag sitting here, right? And I can change the color, but look, that's that's my color options there. So when you have a flag on every single one of these I uh, islands and on all your vehicles, like look, I've got two of my vehicles down there are the same color as every single other flag. And sure, yeah, it's a wheel icon, but if you're like just kind of scanning the horizon and trying to figure out where you're located, especially since we don't have a compass, or you're trying to find your friends real quickly and you're struggling to like find their little uh, little tiny triangle on the map, uh, it'd be nice to be able to have a better, like, you know, an actual color wheel uh, where you can either set like a um, uh, 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 hexadecimal code for your colors. Uh, which I think should be an easy impl implementation to just have like, you know, a long hold F to get a color wheel that has pre-selected colors, or you can just uh, 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 hexadecimal code that. Uh, that'd be pretty, I think, nice to be able to have more flag color options. And then weapons underground. Let's go ahead and uh, since we haven't seen any enemies raid us, uh, mainly because it's only been one day and right before I started recording, I got raided. Um, which by the way, once you've defeated all of the enemies, they do continue to raid, which is actually nice. I was I was glad to see that. I was worried that once you raided everybody, you'd never have enemies ever again. Did I bring gasoline? I did not. Let's just go ahead and take the pedal boat, I guess. Uh, where is the traders? Right here. Uh, so yeah, raiders do keep happening, which is nice. And speaking of which, look at that. Look how cool Dana's glass looks. Uh, roof pieces. Oh, speaking of buildable, since we're driving by, that is hideous. Can I please have 
different style roofs, uh, a la like every other game uh, that's around. Uh, have roofs that I can actually like slope and connect. Um, not like uh, that. That is just weird. One one floor piece style roofs is it's, it's a little bit hideous. But let's go ahead and get on to the traders. Okay, as you can see, some of the items have spawned back in the traders, and I've been frequently coming down and cutting the trees. Give it a long enough time, the uh, the salvageable like scrap metal does respawn. I have seen in a couple of these rooms. Uh, the the chest that has like food and stuff in it has respawned the trash can has never respawned and we've got quite a bit of time on this save um, But so yeah, so respawn timers would be greatly uh, Liked I would, I would yeah, see like right here. This one has respawned. So that's good but the trader um, She needs more animation sure she follows you around But she's so dead Like she's just dead she doesn't have any expression on her face and she doesn't really actually look at you um it'd be nice to see a second trader somewhere else on the map like say maybe one far away uh for a couple reasons one to give you an option to trade if you're a lot longer uh, you know farther away from you know your main base but also to maybe set up some sort of market because as of right now these items are the only items she has sold the entire time I've been playing on here, and you can see we're in day 78. These are the only items she ever sells, and, and we have all of these blueprints, and we pretty much have bought all of these items. It'd be nice to see two different vendors, and as you sell stuff, the stuff that you've sold becomes an item that they can sell kind of deal right. Uh, you know, bring some sort of economy, some sort of market to it. Or like if you trade with her constantly, the other trader starts to make his prices cheaper to entice you to go there, vice versa, so on and so forth, but have different items of both traders. Uh, maybe have the farther one way be the more exotic stuff. Uh, but when you come and look at this, I can see a value on the stuff that gives me the money option, right? Like the magazine, it's 60. But these don't have values. So with the exception of just like clicking on it and see, okay, I get a deal there, right? Uh, if I was to place one scrap metal one scrap metal is clearly worth less than the glass two scrap metals three four five five scrap metals is one glass like that value ratio okay maybe it's okay because you don't find glass all that often but that seems a little steep to me but it'd be nice to know what is glass worth what is scrap metal worth i mean obviously i could sit here and do this all day long and make a spreadsheet of the average deals that she gives um, like right now, I could write down one glass equals five scrap metal. Or uh, if we, let me see, let's take another item. Uh, let's take wood, right? Five wood equals one glass. So like, you know, I could make a, make a spreadsheet for all this, but can you just please tell me what value of items are, like all of the items? Um, that would be nice. So that way you can actually see what things are worth. Plus the silver coins. Like, I guess I could trade all of this stuff for silver coins, but why i mean i guess to, to limit inventory size maybe if i was to trade a bunch of this material in to give me a coin then that way i have just a coin in my inventory instead of having all this extra material I, I guess that's the concept behind that but yeah values values for tradables would be very nice so i actually know what the heck is going on there but i think that kind of that kind of rounds it out i really need to rest apparently my character i've been awake for a long time and using a lot of stamina and my character is super uber duper tired but so I'm going to traverse back over to base and then wait for daytime so you can actually see what's going on. And then I'll give a quick tour of this multiplayer base. And uh, then next episode, we'll actually get back into the single player world. But I felt that it's still early enough in the development of the game. I mean, what, it's only been a month and a half. Hell, not even a month and a half. It's been, what, August 25th now? So, like, not even a month of uh no it's been you know over a month a month like a month and a week or so of the game being out so clearly they've got a lot more development that they're working on you can see from the progression uh whenever you start the game that it says that he's they're, they're going to be working on a crap ton of stuff so i'm super excited for it especially because we've kind of run out of content right now um i haven't made like the alert system and whatnot yeah uh, but i have made pretty much everything else that you're going to see uh, so yeah, so far I'm really 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 digging this game. It's it's super exciting It's got a lot of stuff already and really glitch free for the most part uh, Like I said the only glitchy glitchy part that I've noticed so far has been Spots in the world that I fall out of 
and then and then the enemies glitching into the sand but otherwise everything is running really damn smooth and really fun i love the lights the, the neon's awesome so all right i'm gonna go to sleep and wake up and heal myself up and then we will show everything that we've currently got in the map all right, I guess we'll start off with uh, with where I'm building my base. So I've kind of made this little platform out here that I can actually add some wood to and a little wood pile so you can fill them back up just so we have a little bit of extra light since we don't have any electrical lights outside. I've just kind of decorated the outside with a little uh, nightclub hotel look. I love the, love the neon signs. Uh, the bottom floor is basically, uh, we all started out here in this base together. Uh, sort of in Tweedle and Big Red's uh, little uh, beds and little storage themselves. And I was off over here in this corner where you can see all the collectibles I've been placing down around me, including my chest, just chock-a-block full of items. I mean, look at all these sellables that I have that I haven't even bothered using. Because, I mean, I, I bought the two underwater scooters and a bunch of batteries and whatnot. Uh, and then we've, uh, you know, of course, got pretty much we've been trying to keep one of every kind of clothing in the game just in case we want to just, you know, dress up or whatever. Uh, and then I've kind of sorted out the uh, items in between uh, primitive weapons. Uh, and then that was food container, but I moved my food up to the top floor. So now it's just bait and then <laughs> extra stuff. Uh, and then we've got some buildable stuff down here. These are components uh, and then uh, cloth material. And then this is my extra scrap wood and uh, not scrap wood, scrap metal and ingots. And then we've got charcoal. Holy crap, we have a lot of charcoal because I, I haven't used black powder. Like, that's the only thing black powder is for right now is the sulfur and charcoal. And I've been using regular bullets, so didn't need that. And then we've got our research table. And as you can see, I am completely done with all the research. Uh, took Didn't take very long actually at all. The, the major part for that was getting these advanced parts uh, for the last step, but otherwise psh, that went pretty fast. Then we've got our fridge down here just because it's convenient. We got all our medicine and food stuff down here, which I am lacking in making the food for everyone. Our repair is down here as well, just that way when you respawn, it's quick enough to just repair your items, which currently you don't need uh, both for repairing bases and your clothing and whatnot. There's no resource cost. I don't know if that's gonna change later on down the road, but you literally just come up and click F on it and it repairs all your uh, items here, which is kind of dope to be honest. Uh, extra storage over here because I was running out of space. Then we come to the second floor. We've got our ammo workshop, our anvil, uh, our armor workshop, which over here I have all the different armor pieces, both made and needing to be made, uh, along with uh, gun parts, I think. No, I put gun parts right here. I stuck this chest under here. So then we got all our guns and gun parts. And then this is all the ammo uh, that we've been collecting, uh, as well as the smokeless powder for making the ammo. So that's all our weapons uh, section over there. And then we've got our air tank maker, which I'm wondering if they're going to make one of these that's gonna be a powered air tank one, because currently this is just, you know, you hold F to operate to fill your tank back up. Uh, I wonder if there's gonna be an upgradable air tank, because right now you've got small air tank. It'd be nice to see a large air tank. Or uh, Tweedle suggested the other day, when you're out on a boat, maybe there's a particular boat, like with a modular upgrade or something, that has a deep sea scuba tank thing on it that you know somebody has to be on the boat or you can just start it up as long as you have fuel that then constantly keeps you aired up with you know hoses just like you would with like a deep sea uh tank that would be kind of cool uh then we've got our advanced water purifier which um how it's getting the water is beyond me but hey it works so i'm, I'm not i'm not gonna not <laughs> i'm not gonna question it a uh, battery charger along with the original uh, water purifier. And then we've got our fine wood maker. I uh, just got the one generator currently. It's powering one light over at Dana's base uh, along with the battery charger, the, uh, the recycler machine, and then the fine wood. And then I've just got a bunch of wood storage, the uh, steel foundry, and then scrap storage. And then we've got two furnaces right there sitting along with this is where I put my ores in to then be smelted. Uh, I'd like to see with the uh, fine wood and the steel making, you've got five iron ingots. I'm cool with that. That's fine. But can I do more than one ingot at a time? Can I do more than one fine wood at a time? That would be nice. I would greatly appreciate that. And then we come upstairs to the final floor and you can see I've got my uh, food ingredients followed by my seeds. And then we just have a bunch of planters up here along with our regular grill, our improved grill, our stove. And then I also added the fuel 
maker, which is really awesome to take the chemical substance and turn it into fuel. I think that's dope. Uh, but yeah, so that's my little base area here. And then if we come on down, I have actually put a wall all the way around. I need to go through and add the, the wooden spikes on the front of the wall to help with the, uh, you know, the combating of the enemies. Uh, and then I put little torches next to all of the walls just so we can see where the entrances are. We've decided not to cut the trees down just to give the aesthetic of our island that it's, you know, lived on a little bit, but not like, you know, we, we, we like the environment. We like the trees. We come on into Dana's area, to, uh, to Big Red's area here. And he's, he's, oh, he's been good, good with glass. Look at all this glass. This is amazing. So he's been kind of just setting up a little bit of a shop here uh, to learn how to use some of the materials uh, just, uh, you know, so he doesn't always have to come over to, to my base area and have access to everything. But I'm liking his setup. It's looking really good. Oh, I love, I love the having the. Does he have a door to get out to? Oh, he does have a door to get out to a balcony. Oh, look at all these planters he's got. Look at this view. What a good view he's got. I'm liking it. I'm digging it. Oh, let's go see what his upstairs has the to offer. Yeah, close the door. I have actually, I actually haven't been in his base in a while. Uh, where's your next floor? Here it is. Oh, look at this fancy room. Oh, he even used the cotton as a decoration. Oh, that's cool. Oh, look at that. Double bed. What a kingly view you've got. Oh, see, I would love to be able to lay down on this chair and just relax and look at the view. But yeah, these roofs, sure, they work. But can we? I'd love a different roof option. They're, they're, they're working, but it'd be nice to have another one. So yeah, what a cool view. Oh, I'm loving it. I, the, the look of this game is great. All right, and then finally, uh, last but not least, is uh, Tweedle, who actually hasn't played as much on here as uh, as Big Red and I. Um, oh, actually, uh, I did this. I put a planter full of trees to kind of give like a little uh, central area to the base, but also it's functional, right? It's not just form, it's also function. But then Tweedle has uh, started. He's, he's mainly just been using my base, uh, but he has kind of started as well, making a little area for himself. But he hasn't, uh, he hasn't done much here because, well, he hasn't really had to build, but he can just come up to my base and grab all the resources he needs. But yeah, so that's kind of what we got going on, to, you know, other than just we've gone and defeated all the other areas, placed a flag to claim every other island, as you can see by all the yellow flags out throughout. So I'm super excited for the next update. I think this game is going in the absolute right direction. There's lots and lots and lots to do. I mean, we still have a lot of buildables. I mean, we've got all of these different lights we've never dealt with. We've got a few more boats that we can build. The helicopter, oh, I haven't tried out the helicopter yet. All these defense systems, I'm super interested in the heavy gun and the siren to be able to just sit right here and go and just attack everyone from up at my base instead of having to, uh, you know, go down and walk the perimeter to get them. But yeah, anyway, tell me what you guys think. Th uh, what do you think of my suggestions for improvements to the game or additions to the game? Uh, what are your, like, favorite features of the game? I mean, so far, swimming underwater to get all of your resources is just, it's a blast. It never gets old to dive on down and submerse yourself in the world that this is. Uh, even fighting the enemies on their islands has been pretty fun. I mean, it's been challenging in some respects when it hits nighttime and you got the guys uh, blending in with the background, but it adds that little extra challenge that makes it, you know, not simple and easy to go off and just capture everything. But so far, I'm, I'm enjoying every aspect of this game. I think it's an absolute blast. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think uh, additions uh, should be, changes should be, uh, what you think is great and should not be touched whatsoever, i.e. taking the last item out of a chest and having it respawn when you log back in. Perfect, don't change that. Or, unless you give us a respawn timer. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this little uh, rant and rave and rave about uh you know this game and i shall see you guys in the next episode where we'll actually come you know combat more islands and do things in a single player world my words are getting muddled because i've been talking for 50 minutes now and i'm sure your ears are bleeding i am out of here don't forget to hit like comment subscribe share with the universe and i'll see you guys in the next episode i'll talk to you for now bye